Um, now that I made that repair to the carburetor yesterday as far as the spring, let's see if the engine runs normal. I bet you it will. The RPMs probably are going to need to need to be adjusted a bit, but it shouldn't be racing anymore unless he had it set too high with the set screw. But there's no way it's going to be all over the place and racing like it was yesterday after fixing that spring. That spring still might need to be wound up one or two more times around. But it's got the butterfly in position now. So, and while we're at it, we can probably see if the drive works. And turn the auger, maybe. We'll see. Let's see if she starts right up. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this machine. To sell it, it would need a full repaint. You know, a nice bright red, which wouldn't be that hard. But then again, the one other thing is the auger needs to be welded. Which again, that's not even a big deal. It's just I wish I knew someone closer by that could weld. But that's the one thing I have to finish um, learning as a skill. It's too bad they didn't offer it in high school. Last night I noticed when I was filming that, I didn't catch the spring very clearly as far as how it sits. If I have to pull this cover back off, I'll show exactly. But basically, it's a spring. One end hooks into one spot, then it winds up, and the other part hooks on the top, and it gives tension to the butterfly. And that's it. That's how it works. So let's see if she runs properly now. My bet it's probably going to. Oh, is the fuel shut off off? Yeah, fuel shut off is off. It is going a little bit fast still, but that's simply because there's a screw, there's a set screw for the top RPM speed that I'm gonna have to adjust. So the high and low RPM speeds are gonna need to be adjusted, but it's not running all over the place. So now I can bring it down to here and it'll be at 3600. All right, fuel is off. One, two, three. Yep, it works, it's fully functional. It's a fully functional unit. It drives, the augers spin, the engine runs. Um, low idle needs to come up a little bit. High speed needs to come down a little bit. All I gotta do is fix this um, recoil so it goes in, back in all the way. I do remember mentioning, he mentioned it leaked. The fuel shut off was off. If it does start to leak, then that would just mean needle and seat. Um, I'm not gonna be out here. Yeah, all right, I'll leave the fuel thing on for about five, 10 minutes and see if it does start to leak anywhere. If it does, then that just means that there's one other thing I gotta deal with. It would most likely be the needle and seat of the carburetor. The seat and then the needle is not sealing against the seat to shut the fuel off or to float has one, you know, it's one of them old brass floats and it's got a hole in it and it's sinking and letting too much fuel in. So we'll give it a couple minutes, see if it starts to leak gas. If it does, that's an easy enough fix too. If it doesn't, good enough. It has no key, it doesn't need it. It shuts down this way. No big deal, but it's another good Tecumseh engine. And it has provisions for the electric starter, which means... 
flywheel has the teeth. I don't know if the flywheel also has the magnets um, for a, a light. That's either, is that where the light would have went? No, light would have gone here. This, on these older ones, when they go even older back, they had a key switch up here. They got rid of it and put it down here by then, but they still had the spot on the dash for it. So right here they had an on off key. So I'm gonna give her, it's not leaking gas yet, is it? I'm not seeing anything yet. Let's give her, like I said, let's give it 10 minutes. By 10 minutes, if it did if it did have a problem, it'll start to leak. So I'm gonna just pause it. Or I'll just let you know um, in the description. I'll, I'll just pause it for now. But otherwise, yeah, if it, the unit's fully functional. Not the prettiest, but the only other thing besides that uh, uh, auger needing to be welded would be the fact that um, the scraper blade's completely shot like it's very worn out the scraper blade would need to be replaced so um, and would I uh, keep the machine to sell or am I going to part it out for parts um, probably going to part it I know some people are gonna say that's a shame because these are great machines, but another thing that used to go bad on these, these gearboxes, if you let that bushing wear out too far, the axle would eat into the gearbox and then that's it, you couldn't put a new bushing in to repair it and then you'd need a whole new gearbox and to do that you to swap that out you, you would you know if you bought just a gearbox you're talking about a million things you would have to swap in so you would have to buy a whole used gearbox so 150 fifty dollar engine um 40 dollar rims and tires give or take whatever um one good auger fifty dollars once the other one's repaired that's also a fifty dollar bill uh, these chutes, I forget what they're going for because they do crack. This one's not. That could be, I believe, 35 40 bucks. A pair of skid shoes. I don't know. They're used. I don't know. I would keep those for my machine. Um, friction disc is working. The, belt, the belts are working. Those are good spare parts for mine. Anything else specific that goes bad? Also, this this was definitely a switch over year because these handles were white on the older, older ones. See how these are white? These were white too. But on mine, you've seen mine. There's videos of mine. The engine's black. All this is black. Um, the rims are a silver. The tires are snow hogs. Well, I, the, I upgraded to X tracks. The chute's roughly the same, except it has a plastic wing nut, and it doesn't have two grooves. It only has one. I don't know why they have one. They have two on this one. It was just an older style. I know that you could remove the wing nut and put a chute, uh, a spring, uh, a cable instead. Um, any, any, oh, this belt cover, if you needed it, I don't know, that's probably $20 bill. Meets 1984 safety standards. That's when the safety standards were set. It was built in 88. What day in 1988? You want to say? Let's see. One ninety-five. 195th day. Assembly line or plan D. Um, right, 195, what would that be? 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 
seventh. That's seventh. One eighty is July. One ninety five. That would be the middle of July. So middle of July, nineteen eighty eight. So it would have been sold for the winter of 1988 going into 1989. So, but these were gr good machines, even though it's ugly. Like I could put this thing up for 200, it would go immediately. But that's not enough considering what I would get for it for the parts. Because the engine alone is worth 150 bucks. And as I've been saying with these Tecumsehs, they're going to get harder to come by. So why get rid of a good Tecumseh for only 200 bucks and all these other good parts when, you know, you part it out, you get a lot more money in a good en one of them good engines. These are my favorite engines. Right here, these Snow Kings. You can't... You can't beat them so I've been talking long enough and let's see nah it's not leaking not that I can see if it would have been leaking it would have started dripping and It just really hasn't dripped. Doesn't mean it won't. Like I said, if it starts to leak, that's an easy enough fix. I don't think it's gonna. It's got a good adjustable carburetor. That's good. That seems to be already adjusted properly. It's just the speeds need to be uh, adjusted. One of the interesting thing I noticed about these older mufflers on these Tecumseh engines is they rust. The newer ones, they don't rust like that anymore. They don't, you know, they don't turn that brown rust color. These older ones, they did. You know, they would turn this brownish color. The newer ones, they would stay like a nice silver. And they would just, if they did rust, it would be a little bit, but it would not be like a full brown. So I don't, they, they must have changed the metal they used to make them. They did change the style of the way they made the muffler later on. Instead of it just being one little piece here, it was more added metal. It was kind of curved. It's uh, electronic ignition, not points. 88. It's a good machine, though. Um, okay, I'm done standing here, so I'm going to cut the fuel off now. So it doesn't leak in case it does actually leak. And that's it. She's good to go. So now, all I gotta do is adjust the RPMs. And then I'll get that one auger welded, whether or not it's taken off and sold for parts. Or kept as an entire unit. But yeah, if, if I was to use this machine, or if I was to buy this machine, I would put tire chains on. I would either put tire chains on or change the tires, or both. Change the tires and put better... Change the tires and put tire chains on. But, whatever. It's a good running engine, doesn't smoke. Winter engines, in general, they don't get used as much. You know, you use the snowblower like three times a year. So, residentially, you know, it might get used maybe nine hours a winter. Commercially, you know, it might get used a hundred hours a winter. So, that's why a lot of these engines, you still see them around. They're, they're last, they last longer because they get a lot less use. So, that's why there's still going to be a lot more of them around versus... A Briggs that was on a lawnmower that was used three you know twice a week once a week whatever so that's something to keep in mind so is the base of that chute metal because on mine it's I think it's fully plastic and it's it cracks easier It 
does have a metal ring. I think mine, I don't know, is mine metal too or is my ring plastic? I, I'll have to check because I know on mine, sometimes they'll start to crack a little bit around the base. This one has zero cracks at all on it. But see, this is a plastic chute from 1988. It's not broken. It's not cracked. It's just a quality plastic. So, there, you know, there's nothing wrong with using a plastic chute. It's just as long as you use a quality one, you know. Because, you know, there's that whole debate on the snowblower farm about, oh, the shoot, the snowblowers, the plastic chutes are garbage. And the metal chutes are way better. Not true. You know, this chute's uh, 34 years old. It's perfectly fine and it's plastic. It's a quality plastic though. It's not a thin plastic that starts to bend up and, and look all, you know, bent up and it's not all cracked up. It's a quality plastic. That that's that's all. That's the only difference. Because they made these snow blowers, these same snow blowers, there's ones a little bit older. The, the, this is the first series, this is the series zero. They had a metal chute, but the metal chute was shorter. So when they came out with the plastic one, they made it taller. So these throw really good. These snapper snowblowers, they throw really, really good. And they eat the snow. They devour the snow really well. I know from the ones I've owned. These things are beasts. So, yeah, it's just unfortunate. It looks ugly. <clears throat> because new this machine was fifteen hundred dollars in 1988 you know cleaned up like if this was repainted and looking pretty this is a five hundred dollar machine all day five six hundred dollar machine all day as it stands looking like this the most you're gonna get is two two fifty if you're lucky that's why i'm thinking about just parting it out because you got a hundred and fifty dollar motor right there and then you add one or two more parts and you're already at 200 and people are looking for these buckets because they warp back here this this one it's not warped on this side a little bit there yeah it's got a little bit of warpage but it's not bad <clears throat> but people end up buying these buckets because they get all warped out so <clears throat> but anyway, that's the story, Honor. There it is, freebie. A running, operating freebie. Fixed in, what was it? 20 minutes? Not bad. <laughs>